This is a bottle, and this is an entire Minecraft world inside of bottles. There's a jungle bottle, an ocean bottle, a desert bottle, and so many more. I'll be trapped in here for the next 100 days, with my end goal being to defeat both the Ender Dragon and the Wither. If you go on to enjoy this video, consider subscribing. We're going for 250k this year, and with your help, we can do it. Day one, I spawned inside my new bottle world. There was a chest which contained three of the same book for some reason. The book contained some basic information about the world, such as the fact that nether portals are now illegal. Also, the book refers to the bottles as jars, but let's be honest, the word bottle sounds a million times better. There was a beautiful custom tree in this bottle, and of course, my first instinct was to destroy it. I made a wooden pickaxe, and we'll call him Dave. Me and Dave mined three stone, which made his existence completely worthless because I now had a stone pickaxe. I collected some coal from the bottom of this mine and pretty soon after found some iron. I ended up finding a spider spawner and not only are they incredibly loud and annoying, they also have wall hacks. I began smelting my iron and realized I was kind of lacking in the food department. I'm sure these salmon had wonderful lives to live but sadly I rank higher on the food chain. There were some animals trapped in bottles and soon I'll head over and exploit them, I mean give them a loving home. I chopped down some more of the tree and made myself an iron pick, a shield, and an iron chestplate. I could have had an epic battle with the spiders, but no, I just mined through the wall and stole all the loot. As I was mining around the spawner, I saw some diamonds in the distance, which I'll definitely be taking. I walked into the spider spawner and realized they actually didn't care about me breaking in. I still hadn't forgotten about those wall hacks though, so I killed all of them. I also got a golden apple, that was nice. Mate, how did you die to a spider spawner? I made a pair of shears and an iron helmet and then began bridging over to the animals. I found some farming supplies in this barrel and then sheared these sheep. I made a bed and you won't believe this right, I slept in it. Crazy stuff. The next day I crafted a shovel and started gathering dirt because I wanted to bridge over to this nearby village. They had a lot more food than me which wasn't saying much considering all I had was a single cooked salmon but you get the idea. Once I made it over I started stealing someone's house. Oh, it's your house. He's giving me the side eye, this is not good. I used his house to make a hoe, and while he was busy snitching on me to the other villagers, I collected all their hay bales. I came across a sponge, which might seem pretty weird, but there's actually a hidden sponge in almost every bottle in this world. I barged into this guy's house ready to start looting, but he had some pretty interesting trades, including a nether portal compass, a stronghold compass, and teleporters. The book explains them, but we'll get onto them later. I chucked the flower on the floor as a distraction and then vacuumed up all his possessions. I turned the hay bales into wheat, sold off most of it, and used the profits to buy food. Already we're learning that money actually does buy happiness. I wanted to kill this iron golem, but there were too many witnesses around. But they left eventually. Now that looks like a good place to rob. Once I returned, I dumped all my stuff in the chest with no rhyme or reason and then started collecting more dirt for bridging. I then realized I might as well grow some trees because I could turn three wood into six slabs. I started building a wooden platform because everyone knows in order to build an empire, you need land. Wooden land. I also clearly thought of a joke while recording, but I can't remember it, so I'm just making really awkward eye contact with you. I converted about half of the platform into a tree farm and then began the process of dumping all my items into a new chest. While I was transferring all my stuff, I looked into this jack-o'-lantern's eyes and I knew I had to take him with me. I placed him down and we looked out over the world. It was kind of hard to tell with his one facial expression, but I think he liked the view. I grabbed some sugarcane and made my way over to the village to see if any more free iron had spawned. I feel bad for killing you, I really do, but hey, at least you get to live on as a bucket. I began work on a sugarcane farm and it took ages to get all the water in because I used slabs instead of making an actual trench. The first tree had grown, so I chopped it down and then hit the sack. I crafted a bunch of slabs because I wanted to go on an adventure. I was actually just bridging to the desert a temple I'd seen a couple days earlier, just point A to point B really, but that's besides the point. I got distracted by this spruce bottle and ended up having to fight multiple creepers in order to get inside. This barrel had some fairly decent loot, I'll take a bit of iron. I walked into a sweet berry bush after chopping down this tree and jump scared myself so badly I threw a torch several feet in the air. I then punched a bush in retaliation, just getting some wood, oh a sponge. There was actually another spruce bottle right next to the first so I made my way over. The barrel in this this one had some emeralds and spruce wood, aka the best wood in the game hands down without question. Although Dark Oak's not far behind. After that little side quest, I started
started bridging over to the desert temple. Things were going great with my new neighbors, and that's a lot of mobs. Creepers were exploding left, right, and center, and I was forced to make a tactical retreat, otherwise known as running away. I started going for the stealth option, but come on, no one likes the stealth option. Once I'd murdered every enemy in sight, I began digging down to the treasure. I collected the TNT and ended up finding a god apple and a fortune 3 book. While I was trying to get a look at this stone bottle, this bat just deleted itself. I could see diamonds in the distance and I wanted them. I wanted those diamonds. But night was beginning to fall so I made my way back home. I collected some wood and then shoveled dirt in order to expand the tree farm. Being able to grow big spruce trees is a huge upgrade. Day 5 I watched these mobs burn but they didn't die, it was really unsatisfying. I decided the next bottles I would explore would be these nature ones. I bridged over and made the worst staircase of all time. Why did I use half slabs? The year 2025 rolled around and I finally made it in and this barrel, uh. It, it had some stuff. I thought this rock would be the perfect place for a hidden sponge and I was actually right. This nearby bottle was bee themed and it had some honeycomb, some flowers and... Uh, I wanted to find the next sponge, but even after destroying half the bottle, there was no sign of it. I did find some iron though, I'll take that. The next bottle in line was the jungle bottle, and I really liked this one. The barrel had some alright stuff, but more importantly, I knew I had to tame a parrot. Best friends forever, although I'll probably forget about him in 5 minutes. I headed into this jungle temple and almost immediately stepped on a pressure plate. Ooh, spicy arrows. I made my way through the temple, disarming all the traps, until I came across the guy that arrived before me. I would also have this expression if I died right in front of the treasure. I neutralized this dispenser and then opened the chest. And it was a good chest. Diamonds, gold, name tags, it was great. Me and... me and uh, Percy here then started making our way back home. I didn't call him Percy a single time while recording, but that's his name now. I had a splash potion of poison from one of the temple traps and tried to smash it against this bottle, but... Yeah, I missed. Wow, you suck at this. Shut up, Percy. No one asked for your opinion. The chest that I throw things in was getting pretty full, so I made a second chest to throw things in. I then crafted a diamond pickaxe and hurled my iron one into the void. Rest in peace. I was gonna need a lot of slabs for bridging in the future, so I spent most of the night chopping wood. I had almost enough iron to make an anvil, but I was one and got off. It's for a good cause, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, I just said that to make him feel better. I made the anvil and put Fortune 3 on my pickaxe. I hurled this chicken egg about 30 feet in the air and then made a bunch of slabs and torches. This guy was staring directly into my soul while I was buying food, probably because I keep murdering all the village golems. Now that I had slabs, torches, food and a fortune pick, it was time to visit the stone bottle. Although I first made a detour to this ice bottle. The barrel contained... ice. I could hear zombie sounds from below this igloo and sure enough, there was a hidden passageway. You're supposed to use the weakness potion and golden apple to kill the zombie villager, but I'm keeping them for myself. I could see this woodland mansion in the distance and there was only one thing to do. Hang out with Bob, obviously. I finally made my way over to the stone bottle and the very first thing I did was grab those diamonds in the corner. Thanks to the fortune 3, I was able to turn 4 diamonds into 12. Is is that legal? I found a cave entrance and realized this was not going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy. It was going to be difficult, difficult, lemon difficult. Although the amount of ores here more than made up for it. Actually, no, they didn't. There's four creepers in this tiny hole. I smelted some iron in order to complete my armor set. Although since this is hardcore, it has the defensive capabilities of paper. I nearly got cornered by these creepers, but managed to get out just in time. Now that I've defeated all the monsters, this should be nice and simple. What? Yeah, no, I definitely need some better gear. I then left-clicked the horde until not a single enemy remained. I jumped down and, uh... Yeah, this was definitely not a fun moment. I backed up and tried to go a different route, which was somehow even worse. But eventually, I cleared out all the enemies and got another sponge. I began heading down to start a strip mine, but that clearly wasn't going to be an option. I used a really fair and balanced strategy called hit the enemies from a one block gap where they can't hit me. This room was home to a ruined portal and the chest even had a mending book. I ran into an abandoned mine shaft literally two blocks away and the spiders still wall hack. Why are they like this? I tried going round another way and I had things completely under control. You can tell by the way I'm panicking and hitting a fence post instead of the cave spider. Ooh, free stuff. Any lesser adventurer would have backed off here. And that's exactly what I did. Hey, it was worth it. I like having all my organs inside my body and decided to take the opportunity to leave. This guy's eyes were glowing. That's sick. The desert bottle was not looking like a fun time, so I bridged around the outside. I fought my way through the spruce bottle and... What is your plan here? 
You're just gonna stay up there forever? Alright, see you in a bit then. I crafted the remaining pieces of diamond armor and now we're getting somewhere. I wanted to start work on an actual base and began smelting some cobblestone. I also used my diamonds to make an axe and before everyone gets mad, don't worry, I still have two left over for the enchanting table. I then chucked a bunch of wood into the furnace in order to get charcoal. I was gonna need to make a cow pen so I started gathering materials. Just kidding, this is the cow pen. Yeah, it's ugly but it saved me maybe three minutes of work. I used the dirt that should have been for the cow pen on a farm. That's right, a farm. We might as well rename this day to the most boring day ever in a 100 days video. I kept bone meal in the crops and collecting them with my fortune pickaxe in order to get more seeds. Day 9, I watched these guys burn and die and then grabbed my sugar cane that had grown very high. I learned that from William Shakespeare. I now had a ton of iron which I wanted to sell to the villagers, but before I can sell them my random junk, I have to buy their random junk. Seeing as I had a whopping 3 emeralds to my name, I was gonna need to get some bread. The money sort of bread, not the not the food. Anyway, does anyone want a job? Nah, man, this guy is an idiot. Luckily, this guy came to the rescue and I sold him a ridiculous amount of sticks. No idea why he needs so many, but it's probably best not to ask. I found the village armorer, but just before I wasted all my emeralds, I realized something. With that weakness potion from earlier, I could cure this guy if he was a zombie villager, and then his trades would be practically free. I'm talking legal robbery here. I pushed him along some minecart tracks, and before long, me and the prisoner, I mean my best friend, were on our way back to the base. He kept asking questions like, why are you taking me here? and why is your home a giant wooden platform, but I didn't have time for questions. I was instead convincing a zombie to follow me back home, and I may or may not let him eat the prisoner. Best friend, I keep getting that wrong. I wanted to get the most out of my one weakness potion, so I went back to the village, woke up this random woman, and took her back to the base. I made these guys a house, and then birthed Green Lad into the world. He did try kill me on the way in, but he's their problem now. As the sun rose, I did some normal stuff, like gathering wood and talking to my pet parrot. I was gonna need more stone for my new base, and spent a good chunk of the day mining. I actually came across some diamonds, and managed to turn 5 into 14. The fortune enchantment is so good. I continued gathering stone until I grew concerned about my pickaxe's well-being. I also bred the cows. I don't care about their well-being, but you already knew that. I made an auto smelter to smelt all the stone and then headed to the village. Wake up, I want to buy food. Whoever designed this village did not include enough beds. The sun was going down, which meant it would be safe to visit the zombie villagers. I was faced with a difficult decision and I was forced to kill Green Lad. Well, I didn't need to, but I couldn't be bothered to move him. I splashed the villagers with the weakness potion and fed them each a golden apple. They were actually too close to each other, which meant whoever was cured first would just get turned back into a zombie by the other. Also, fun fact, while being cured, zombie villagers get strength too. I love being repeatedly punched in the face by the person I'm trying to save. Well, I mean, I did kind of ruin their lives in the first place, but that's not important. I returned to the verge in order to pick up their workstations. The following morning, I was chopping wood when the deed was done. I had cured them of the illness, which I technically gave them. Before I could free them, and by that I mean just let them out of their minecarts, I was gonna need a security system in place. After being on call with a team of NASA experts and mumbo jumbo for hours, I placed down two fence gates. I mean, it works. Now that the villagers have been cured, their trades were at a massive discount. I leveled up the armorer, we're gonna call him Barry, and he happily paid me one emerald per one piece of iron. I also leveled up the weaponsmith, and we'll call her, uh, a Brenda. Yeah. I kept buying useless stuff from Barry to increase his rank, and eventually he was selling enchanted diamond armor for one emerald. Even I feel guilty for scamming him that badly, but not that bad. Now that I had more than a couple emeralds to my name, I went to the village and bought a pair of teleporters from the explorer. Thankfully, the book explains how these things work. You put one down with a button on the top, place another down at a different location, and bang, you now have interdimensional travel at the push of a button. I bred the cows because when am I not breeding the cows and then I grabbed that first teleporter. I had a much better place to put it than the village barely 50 blocks from my base. I placed it in the snow bottle which meant I could now save a ton of time when exploring in that direction. Day 12 the stone was finally ready which meant I could start work on my actual base. I took all the materials I gathered and made a circle. That's right, a circle. And I went to the effort of texturing it too because I hate myself. I also ran out of stone very quickly. I made some torches, bred 
the cows for the 16th time and then hauled myself over to the stone bottle. It was also a good opportunity to mine ores, especially iron. I can get XP from smelting it and from selling it to Barry and Brenda. It's a win-win honestly. Also, now that I had full diamond armor, I decided to take on the mineshaft, except it turned out to be just one corridor. It had some iron in it though, so I'm not complaining. While I was collecting stone, I actually ended up coming across some diamonds. I used some of them to make a spare diamond pickaxe because my fortune one was starting to run out of durability. So I'm using this pickaxe to mine stone. Does that make it a stone pickaxe? But it's made of diamonds. You know what? That's going to hurt my brain if I think about it too long. I'd assumed I'd discovered everything in the stone bottle, but I was wrong. There was somehow an entire ravine hiding in here. These mobs weren't very happy with me visiting them. They were saying something like, back off, this is our ravine. I don't know, I wasn't really listening, but hey, they had tons of ores lying around. Excuse me, just trying to steal your stuff here. With my inventory full of rocks that no human should feasibly be able to carry all at once, I made my way back home. I had to use every furnace I owned to smelt all the cobblestone. I harvested my sugarcane, sold iron for an unreasonably high price, and bought a diamond axe and helmet. Seeing as I can sell iron for one emerald apiece, and they sold me the diamond gear for one emerald each, I basically just traded two iron ingots for enchanted diamond gear. I harvested all my wheat because my army of cows is growing bigger by the day. I resumed work on my stone circle and it took me a lot longer than I thought to fill it in. If you're wondering why it's so big, it's because I needed space for not only my house, but also... Actually, I'm not going to spoil the surprise. Also, I was scamming Barry and Brenda at every opportunity. It is for a good cause though. My own wallet. Day 15, I finished the circle and it was glorious. I was jumping around out of excitement. It's feeding time! While I was now the proud owner of a stone circle, I was going to need to actually build a house on it. I made my way over to the desert bottle and immediately began tearing down the temple. I don't know who who owns this but I do know that they're gonna need insurance. I also grabbed some sand because I wanted to make some glass panes. I chucked the sandstone in the furnace in order to make smooth sandstone and then spent the night chopping wood. Entertaining content. I started work on my house and ended up building it one block too short so I had to move the entire thing up. I used smooth sandstone for the walls and textured them with some regular sandstone. I then added a staircase at the front as well as some minor details like trapdoors. Construction was quickly halted by the fact that I had already run out of spruce wood. I spent that whole previous night chopping wood and I'm already out. With my spruce supplies back up, I returned to my house, but the blocks didn't feel like existing. They, they turned invisible. Like, <laughs> what? Once they came back from the shadow realm, I was able to resume building. I used some oak wood for the second floor to help differentiate it from the sandstone on the first. It was going great until I ran out of wood again. I should rename this video to 100 days chopping wood in Minecraft Hardcore. Thankfully, because the area outside the bottles is treated as the void biome, no monsters can actually spawn, which was great because I forgot to place a single torch on the entire circle. I harvested the sugar cane, ate an apple to keep the doctors away, ignored Percy the parrot, and all oh my days, that's a lot of cows. Ow, that's my ribs. Guys, one at a time. One at a time, please. I made a bunch of slabs because I wanted to take a break from building and get to the next bottle. You know, warping 500 blocks in an instant never gets old. The next bottle turned out to be a pillager outpost, and while I knew the loot would suck, the dark oak wood more than made up for it. I started bridging over to the top, but unfortunately there was already a guard up there. Also, I clearly had my shield up. How did that hit me? I ate some pumpkin pie and charged at him and his mates, and uh... Then then this happened. I knew I had about three seconds before I became a lovely pile of items and sprinted towards the corner of the bottle where I just about managed to build myself a box before it was too late. I then smashed the glass with a sunflower, hurled the sunflower into the void and oh wait I'm safe I don't need to be dramatic anymore. I built a staircase up to my bridge and then teleported back home to despawn all the pillagers. Once I returned I ran into the bottle, grabbed the loot from this barrel and then made my way up the outpost spamming every floor with torches. Oh wow a multi-shot book. That's cool. I smacked this guy off which I thought was hilarious and then finally started collecting the dark oak wood. A pillager captain spawned and I couldn't kill him because then I'd get bad omen and a raid would start once I returned to the base. But I could hit him off the tower. The more I watched this footage the more I questioned why I didn't just destroy the spawners. It would have made my life so much easier. Once I made the tower look like a lego set after your little cousins played with it I started heading out. Except I forgot to block up this hole I made which was now allowing pillagers to walk directly onto my bridge. I blocked Locked off the staircase and made a break for it, and if whoever shot this arrow had better aim, this video would not exist. 
that's weird to think about. Once I was back home, I used all the dark oak wood I stole for a floor, but I didn't like it, so I replaced it with spruce. Iron for sale, everyone. Iron for sale. Only costs your life savings. Come get it. Come and get it. I spent some time decorating my house with some trap doors, glass panes, and leaves. They looked nice, but the problem I was facing was that my house literally did not have a roof. I harvested my wheat field, losing half the produce to the void, and fed the nation of cows. So which one of the kids is the future heir to the throne? I decided I wanted to build my roof out of concrete, and in order to make concrete, you need sand. I started gathering it the peasant way, before realising I could just do this. Much easier. There's now a huge chasm in here which I will undoubtedly fall into, but I did save a lot of time. The other ingredient needed for concrete is gravel, and I remembered there was some back at the first bottle. I had to move the ladder to the cow pen, and after breaking it, I genuinely could not place it back down because of the sheer number of cows. This might be an issue. Once I got it into place, I shoveled what little gravel there was and then headed over to the village to buy more food. I bought so much pumpkin pie from this guy that he leveled up and started selling suspicious stew. Well, that sounds very healthy. There was actually a little bit of gravel in the village and I managed to birth a chicken into the world. He's on his own now, that's nature. I also went around stealing every orange tulip in sight because I wanted to dye my concrete orange. Unfortunately, my gravel supplies were holding everything back and I was only able to craft 48 concrete powder. Day 20, I went to the village and used the money I'd made from selling iron to invest in two sets of teleporters. I'd come to the conclusion that the only way to get more gravel was to explore more bottles and pray I found more. Each pair of teleporters has to be a different colour to work correctly, so I dyed my new sets in orange and red respectively. I headed up my unnecessarily long staircase in order to explore the other side of the bottle world. Now that I think about it, this is the lamest quest ever. Like who goes, I'm gonna search the world to find gravel. Me apparently. I ended up running into a mesa bottle, which was pretty cool. It even had a mini gold mine with some actual good loot. I also cleared out every gold deposit I could find. I tried looking for the hidden sponge, but gave up within about a minute. And then I saw it, not the sponge gravel. A lot of gravel. I rushed over to it like a starving man who can only eat gravel. Anyway, I started mining and then lost 20 years of my life to this Elder Guardian jump scare. This bottle had a mini ocean monument in it, which meant any time I got close, I would be struck with mining fatigue 3 and be left unable to mine blocks. I cured the mining fatigue with some milk from this cow and teleported back home, forced to abandon that huge supply of gravel I really needed. I had this bottle of enchanting I stolen from the perjure outpost and I used it to play catch with the floor. With the north set of bottles leading to the ocean monument, I decided to try my luck in the south. These pillagers were still up on the bridge and I approached at a snail's pace because I was crouching with my shield up. They weren't the brightest and soon it was down to a 1v1. I said you ever heard of an arrow to the face? He said what? And then I said bang! Arrow to the forehead. I'm a master of misdirection and that arrow nearly just killed me. I finally blocked off the hole and saw that the next bottle contained a mountain. And mountains always have gravel. I had a strong suspicion the hidden sponge would be at the top of the mountain and it was. I genuinely felt like Sherlock Holmes. This mountain had goats, but not a single piece of gravel. I even dug into the mountain in a desperate attempt to unearth a single piece of gravel, but I found nothing. That's fine, that's fine, we'll just go to the next bottle. It was a deep slate cave, and seeing as the stone bottle had no gravel in it, I wasn't convinced this one would either. But after climbing up onto the top, this bottle caught my eye. Not because it would have gravel. I mean, it's literally a giant wooden box, but because it had an air of mystery about it. I mean, it clearly wasn't a biome like the other bottles. And so, as night settled, I began bridging over. As I made my way inside, I realised it was some kind of maze. This chest had a stack of torches, which would definitely come in handy. I was scared of the possibility of there being a trap or enemy lying in wait around any corner. I wanted to do the maze legit, but I'm awful at mazes, and it wasn't long before I started making some artistic adjustments. I found a chest with some golden apples and even the hidden sponge, but no sign of any way up to the next floor. But after some more tweaking to the maze's layout, I discovered a ladder. I made my way up and no thank you. I thought about the best way to tackle the situation before realising I had to jump in head first. Seeing as there were only a couple zombies, I thought it would be easy. Then an entire horde emerged. All of a sudden, I got hit with the slowness effect and set on fire. An arrow buried itself in a nearby bookshelf as I realised I was dealing with something a lot stronger than just some simple zombies. I healed up and then poked my head out. I approached with my shield up and saw a pair of eyes in the shadows. And then I saw this thing. Clearly this guy had both drank way too many cans of Red Bull 
people and woken up on the wrong side of the bed because he was not taking any prisoners. I chugged a golden apple and did my best to light the area up. He charged at me and things turned ugly, fast. I dropped this zombie and then used some kind of ultra instinct to block this shot. The skeleton took me down to two and a half hearts and this golden apple was my only means of survival. He tried to attack again, but this time I was ready. I blocked every shot, countered with my sword and finally defeated the skeleton. He dropped his bow and yeah, no wonder every shot was deleting my health bar. There was a ton of loot in here and it was well worth the boss fight. Well, for the most part. There was an iron shovel with mending, silk touch and efficiency 4. I also hadn't collected any obsidian up to this point and decided I might as well take the opportunity. This took a long time. Like a really long time. I could have done an epic water bucket to get down, but I prefer my legs unbroken. I made the trek all the way back to the snow bottle, and from there I teleported home. The state of my chest was really starting to get out of hand. I mean, I'm onto my fourth double chest of random stuff. Day 23, I looked out over my cow pen at the sheer number of livestock and realized enough was enough. Just kidding, you can never have enough. Although I did finally start killing some of them. I put my 56 soon to be stakes in the furnace and then teleported over to the mesa. I was gonna get the gravel from the ocean bottle no matter if the elder guardians tried to stop me. Except they were like, okay, we'll just stop you then. So I gave up and started bridging around the bottle to see what else I could find. Oh come on, I'm not even trying to steal the gravel this time. I saw this bottle with a tent in the distance and I wanted to check it out. It might be home to an innocent civilian I can steal from, you never know. Once I arrived, I couldn't get in because of the mining fatigue, so I built myself a little box to wait in. While we're here, you should go follow my Twitter, at mosey underscore exe, link in the description. Once I could finally get into the bottle, it turned out there was someone here. A lost explorer. I think he was trying to stare off into the moon like he was in a movie, but the moon's that way. He sold some pretty interesting stuff. A mushroom bottle compass, red mushrooms, and brown mushrooms. I stole most of his stuff while his back was turned because he literally can't turn around, and then I had a look at the neighboring bottle. It had a ton of emerald ores, but also a ton of enemies. I then thought it would be good to have a proper heart to heart with the lost explorer. Mosey. How do you know my name? Because you were plugging your Twitter outside like two minutes ago. Oh, uh, oh yeah. There's a prophecy. Um, I, yeah, I, I forgot it. Can you at least stop stealing my stuff? I stole some of the wool from his tent to make a bed and had a nice rest. I placed down a teleporter, although I'd forgotten to place one back home for it to link to. I wanted to enter this bottle with the emerald mine, but there was still a ton of mobs inside. I was cooking up a master plan when I realized the best thing to do would be to head home, despawning all the mobs in the process, and then connect up the teleporters and come back. Hold on. That's... That's a bottle full of gravel. Also, I am definitely going to be exploring this dungeon later. I found the hidden sponge almost instantly. These blocks might as well have been solid diamond. Okay, well, maybe not that valuable, but they're up there. In fact, I was so excited to collect all the gravel that I broke my enchanted iron shovel. Ah, oh, you, can, you can just see the despair. There was a saddle in this barrel, and for some reason, I decided I was going to tame a horse and ride it all the way back home. Now, horses are a two block wide animal and my entire bridge is one single block wide. It was about here where I started to regret my decision. Once we got to the mesa, I ran into a problem. I needed to break some blocks in order for the horse to fit, but I just received mining fatigue from a guardian. I also couldn't get off the horse because I just fall into the void. I used some blocks to make a little platform and was able to safely dismount. I then got some milk and was able to expand the entrance. Sadly, the teleporter only works for humans, not horses. I really don't want to go through all the trauma of trying to get you back to the base, so this is your home now. I linked the teleporter with the one at the Lost Explorer's bottle, and now this emerald mine was a lot easier to enter. There were a bunch of powered rails with a minecart, so I turned them all on and gave it a push. It was pointless. I started mining emeralds and instantly found the hidden sponge. It was a great experience mining the emerald ores. I mean, I'm literally mining money. How could this get any better? I then bought a single red mushroom off the explorer. I tried to plant it so that I could grow a huge mushroom and completely invalidate his business, but I guess the creator of this map anticipated that. I even tried planting it back home, but with no luck. So I sucked it up and let him scan me and then bought the mushroom jar compass. They're, they're not jars. Their bottles. I was finally able to craft all the concrete powder I could ever want. But before I started on the long-awaited roof, I began setting up a pumpkin farm. Ah, 
Probably best if you look away, mate. The reason I'm doing this is not so that I can feed villagers or do any other kind of good deed. It's purely so that I can have another orange block to texture my roof with. It's technically a roof farm. I placed down a ton of orange concrete powder and then poured water down the side to turn it into concrete before mining it all down. Who wants iron? I mean, of course you guys do. It's literally your only purpose in life. At last, I was able to start work on the roof. It might not look like I'm making much progress, and that's because I wasn't. I don't know why I chose to make the most overcomplicated textured roof in existence, but it was starting to look good. I continued building on day 27, but instead of running out of concrete, I actually ran out of dark oak wood. So I happily skipped over to the pillager outpost and said hello by murdering them and then harvesting what was left of their property to use for my own. Ah, oh, I'm just I'm just too kind. I resumed construction on the roof and things were starting to come together. I did have to stop within minutes to turn all this concrete powder into regular concrete, but apart from that it was smooth sailing. Or smooth building, I guess. I also intentionally left this section empty so that I would have space to add a chimney. I teleported over to the mesa biome and said hello to my chronically neglected horse. I've been doing a fair bit of building so I wanted to switch things up. I bridged over to this deep slate bottle, broke in and made the owners very mad. I'm not gonna lie, lush caves were one of the best things from the caves and cliffs update. I mean this is just beautiful. But you know what's more beautiful than nature? money. This guy blew a hole in the bottle, and this guy tried copying his idea. I was originally going to use stone for the house's chimney, but I realized deep slate would actually work just as well, if not better. I whipped out my expendable diamond pickaxe and mined a bunch of it. Very slowly, I'd like to add. I really need to set up an enchantment table. One thing that's always bothered me is that you can't make stone bricks from cobblestone, but you can make deep slate bricks from cobbled deep slate. I know this is a game of blocks, but that doesn't really make much sense. I began building the chimney, and let's be honest, it's a chimney. Not the most exciting thing in the world. I crafted some campfires and made a return to the deep slate bottle in order to grab some clay, as well as stealing some of the endangered plant life. I started turning the clay into bricks and grew an azalea tree in order to get its leaves. I used the bricks to make plant pots, which in turn I used to make this really nice chimney design. And I was finally able to complete the roof. That only took a shocking amount of time. Well, that's the house complete. Oh wait, I still need to build an entire interior. Chopping. Placing. Wait, I don't like that. Re building. Okay, I actually like this one. Finishing. Well, I wasn't finished, I was lying. What I should have spent day 31 doing was moving all my stuff into my new storage system. What I actually did was decorate my house with some plants, and some bookshelves, and a desk, and a bunch of lanterns. I had a ton of books from cheating in that maze and made plenty of bookshelves, as well as an enchanting table. It was an emotional moment, but I had to take down my auto smelter. I'm gonna rebuild it in my house in about 30 seconds, I don't know why I'm acting like it's a big deal. I set up the enchanting area on the bottom floor, as well as my auto smelter. Also I need a fireplace. <laughs> Much better. I made whatever this thing is and placed this spore blossom on the ceiling. I also use some candles to add to the room's ambience or something like that. I was pretty much making it all up as I went along. Thanks to the residents of the Cow Nation, I had plenty of leather to craft item frames. Those residents may or may not no longer be alive. Today was the one and only organization day. I feel like every 100 days video has one of these where whoever's playing has to spend the entire day sorting out all this stuff. But I was gonna use money to speed up efficiency because the more time I save on organizing, the more I can spend scamming my villagers. After purchasing a set of teleporters and dyeing them light blue, I placed one at my house and the other at my old chest. Once I sorted out everything in my inventory, I could instantly teleport back to load up again. Seeing as most of my storage consisted of barrels, I wasn't able to label them with item frames, meaning I would have to rely on memory alone. Spoiler alert, I'm not very good at that. Moving all your stuff in Minecraft is a lot like spring cleaning in real life. You find random stuff you completely forgot about, such as these maps I stole from the explorer ages ago. They kept me entertained for a solid few minutes. Now that all my sponges were together and not thrown into random chests, I could see that we were up to 9. I also dyed my bed yellow, usually I go for red to honour the OG, but I felt like switching it up. Day 34, it was time to begin enchanting. I cycled through all my equipment, but none of the offers really stood out to me. I decided to take this Depth Strider 3 enchantment, which was a good choice. I got Protection 3 and Unbreaking 3 on my leggings, and then an absolutely godly helmet enchantment. I legitimately get this every single video and I don't know why. I already had an efficiency 5 book lined
flying around from looting the skeleton boss chamber, so I wasn't too worried about what pickaxe enchantment I got. I was left just shy of level 30, so I robbed Barry and Brenda. In my defense, they think they're getting a good deal. I also bought a pair of protection 2 leggings, which I could combine for protection 3, and then I could combine those with my current protection 3 leggings for protection 4. That's way too many of the words protection and leggings in one sentence. After spending one level on an axe to reset the enchants, I was able to get protection 4 on my chestplate. I did some combining of books and pickaxes, but unfortunately didn't have quite enough levels to make a perfect one. So I just went for prop 4 leggings instead. Now this is a quality set of armor, but I was going to need more levels in the future and I dreamed of a capitalist empire. All in due time though, all in due time. For now I was chopping wood, chopping sugar cane, and sleeping. With my armor vastly upgraded I was ready to go to the nether. If you remember the book of rules we read at the start, it said that the nether and end are custom made with jar bottles. But this little part of the bottom was pretty interesting because it mentioned old forgotten portals that might still work. And this portal I found earlier in the stone bottle, well that seems pretty forgotten to me. I repaired it, lit it, and it works. It actually worked. Oh, this is what I get for being creative. Nothing. I mined some ores, but I didn't really want them. I just wanted to fill the nether portal shaped hole in my heart. So I returned to the village and bought the nether portal compass. I started bridging out, got extremely tempted to pay a visit to the woodland mansion, but ultimately decided to continue with my original mission. I had no idea if the nether portal bottle was a few hundred blocks away or 10,000. It was 10,000. Of course it was 10,000. I bridged night and day and things were starting to get out of hand. But then, in the very distance, I could just about see the shape of a bottle. I started closing the gap, but at this point I was practically out of slabs. I'd forgotten to set up a teleporter, so if I ran out, I was gonna have to travel all the way back home for blocks, and then all the way back. I was forced to use the cobblestone I brought for the nether in order to continue moving. And then, I had nothing left. The bottle was right in front of me, but I came up just Barely sure, but I did have one thing I could do. By destroying some of the bridge, I could pick some of it up and reuse the slabs. This was risky. If too many fell into the void, not only would I not be able to reach the bottle, but I would have no way of getting back home either. Thankfully, things went to plan. There was a sick custom tree inside, which I immediately destroyed and used to repair the bridge. And now I could finally go through to the nether. I was expecting it to just be the standard nether, but nope. It was all bottleified. That's not a word, but it suits the situation. I realized I've forgotten the obligatory piece of gold armor to make the piglins happy, so I was going to be staying a mile away from the crimson forest bottle. I cut down a tree to get some wood for slabs and ended up finding a sponge. I started bridging out, but I was scared. There was a ghast around, and one shot from the guy could send me plummeting to my death. There was only a piglin child in this warped forest bottle, so I wasn't worried about my lack of 24 carat armor. There was also an enderman, and I wanted pearls, so I killed him. He didn't drop one. So I killed his brother, and he also didn't drop one. I mined a bunch of netherrack, which is a slightly better material to bridge with in the nether than wood. I got the advancement for entering a nether fortress, when, as you can see, I am nowhere near the nether fortress. There was a blaze inside this bottle, which I really wanted to kill, but it was guarded by a ton of magma cubes. So I said, okay, fine, I'll just go to the fortress. Then I looked at the horde of enemies on it. Hi, it's me again. Also, the worst part of magma cubes is all the tiny baby ones. It's so annoying. Eventually, it was just me and the blaze, and while my hopes weren't high, he actually dropped a rod. This was huge. I'm talking starting the capitalist empire I mentioned five minutes ago, huge. Already, there were pedestrians clogging up my bridge. Why are there so many of them? As I mentioned earlier, I didn't have a teleporter, so I had to make the journey back home on foot. Eventually, the bottles started coming into view, and I was able to warp home. It was kind of dumb to have my teleporters still on the wood platform, so I moved them to the stone circle. But more importantly, here's why that one blaze rod is so useful. I'd spotted this brewing stand on day two, and now that I had a blaze rod to power it, I'd be able to brew my own weakness potions. It's funny how after being cured, villagers will happily accept whatever outrageous price you charge them. I mean, you could show Barry and Brenda the Balenciaga croc, and they'd probably buy it. Before I could set up my trading hall, I was going to need plenty of villagers. I picked this house to convert into the breeder, and while I was more than happy to spend seven in-game days on my own house, I will be spending about seven minutes on this one. It's quite possibly the ugliest thing I've ever made, but it will get the job done. Also hi, after gifting the villagers a hut made of only the materials on hand, I happily went to sleep in my oak panelled manor. With the breeder, if you can even call it that, complete, 
I began planning out where the future trading hall would go. It mostly consists of placing dirt and then breaking it because I'm indecisive. I had a build in mind, but it was too big to fit properly on the circle. I had two choices, shrink the build or mutate the circle. I chose the cardinal sin. Oh, it's horrible. I do fix it later, by the way. I, I do have some common sense. I wanted to build the trading hall out of concrete. Clearly, I hadn't learned my lesson from my house and set about collecting more sand. It's a very weird way of collecting sand, but it works. I went back to the savannah bottle to get more gravel, and without my efficiency 4 iron shovel, it was a lot slower. Oh wait, I can just use torches. Useless! I was gonna need some different dyes for this concrete, two of them being grey and light grey, which both require black dye. So I bridged over to this bottle that had a bunch of squids in it, and I know every American watching this right now is waiting for me to say it. It was a bottle of water. You're welcome. Now where was I? Oh yeah, murdering innocent squids in order to paint my training hall a nice colour. I made some different dyes and started crafting concrete, and I genuinely had to ration out how much of each colour I made. I took every piece of gravel from the savannah bottle, so if I misjudge the amounts in any way, I'm gonna have no way to make more. I then had a staring contest with this stone brick slab, and seeing as it has no eyes to stare with, I can only assume I won by default. I don't make the rules. Wait, yeah I do. Day 40, I made the correct choice in life and realised that this extended circle abomination had to go. With peace and harmony restored to all circle lovers around the world, I scaled back the size of the trading hall. I crafted some more concrete and began building. Instead of converting all the concrete powder beforehand, I just built with it and then poured some water on top. In real life, this would be a horrendous way to go about construction. Thankfully, this is Minecraft, where the laws of physics nor the laws of government apply, because I would definitely be arrested if they did. While I I did record a time lapse in replay mode, it's completely corrupted, like this is what you get when you open the file, just a blank void. If you can't tell what I'm building, you might start to get the idea. It's McDonald's- no it's not. I don't want to get sued. This- this here is McRonald's. Completely different. And completely stylish. Well, from the front anyway. I was really starting to wonder if I'd have enough concrete for this, but my only option was to push on. I ran out of deep slate for the roof and needed to collect more. I also ended up mining copper only because it was in the way. I don't hate copper, it's just so underwhelming. After adding some other elements like a drive through the restaurant was finally complete. Apart from this gaping hole in the roof. Oh, but a roof is a critical part of the structure. No, it isn't. It's uh, it's an open-air McDonald's, the first of its kind. I started setting up some areas for the prisoners, sorry, willing employees, and realised what I'd built looked exactly like a prison. I mean, it seems like a place that would sell depressed meals instead of happy ones. So I tried with stone instead, because that'll work. It did not work. I was going to need a way to make my business not look like a jail in disguise, which in all fairness it is, and set out on another desperate attempt to find gravel. I checked this other snow bottle because it had a lake, and lakes have loads of gravel. So I went to the mountain, you know, the same mountain I tried to find gravel in earlier and failed miserably. I really don't know what I was expecting. Go away Emerald Ore, I want gravel. To add insult to injury, I sank in the snow once I got outside, so not only was I a man with no gravel, I was a very cold and annoyed man with no gravel. The next bottle on the list of bottles that contain zero gravel but Mosey's gonna search them anyway, was the deep slate one. This skeleton Loki juked me and for that he had to die. And then I found diamonds. I wanted gravel, not priceless gems. You can tell I'm getting desperate because I started trying my luck with the ocean bottle. You know, the bottle that stops you from mining every 10 seconds. I admitted defeat and walked back to the mesa ready to teleport home. And then I realized the answer was staring me right in the face. Why use red concrete when the mesa bottle's full of red terracotta? There's so much. This is amazing. Hey man, can you stop stealing my entire biome? I have a wife and kids. Sorry man, can't hear you. There's a lot of heavy machinery going on and construction. Sorry. I didn't actually realize it at the time, but look at my pickaxe durability. It is a genuine miracle it survived. I noticed once I got back home and tried to fix it, but remembered I'm essentially broke for levels. Thanks for your money. Now that I had a good supply of brightly colored blocks, I could start replacing the stone cells. Now it may still be a prison, but it's a company themed prison. Isn't that great? I spent a while making a wooden walkway so that I could access the upper level. I also filled in the ceiling, but not the actual roof. There's still a giant unfinished hole. I was gonna need- I was gonna need some employees, muck employees if you will, and went to craft some lecterns. 
In addition to the lecterns, I also placed a bunch of composters, because farmers will be the way I make most of my money. I harvested my wheat for the first time in absolutely ages, and then converted it into bread. I bet that's going to taste terrible, I mean delicious. I gave it all to the villagers so that they'd start having children. I then went to the explorer's house and picked up a couple sets of teleporters. I would try convert him into a zombie and then back again for the discounts, but if something went wrong and he somehow died, it would not be good. In fact, it would be very bad. Talking of converting zombie villagers, I needed to set up a place for that to happen. I channeled the energy of a 2012 noob vs troll video and built a glorious dirt hut. I added some glass and a torch, and my masterpiece was really starting to come together. The idea is that a villager arrives in a minecart, a zombie infects him, and then I press this button to activate powered rails and send him on his merry way. Before I started work on a place to cure infected villagers, I was gonna need a zombie to infect them. Yummy villagers to eat, any volunteers? Two zombies follow me back, one with maximum gold armor drip and one without. Place your bets in the comments now as to who survives. If you said the one with gold armor, you'd be wrong. I led the other guy over to the hut and everything went as planned. I think I'll call you, uh, J Jonathan. I started creating the conversion chamber, otherwise known as a 3x3 dirt shack. I made this incredible redstone mechanism to transport villagers and started leading the minecart track into the village. I built it in the open which meant animals and villagers could walk all over it and I'm sure that won't lead to any problems in the future. That's foreshadowing by the way. Now that I'd spent the entire night setting the whole thing up, the only logical thing to do was to test it out. I set up a teleporter in the village because I was getting tired of running back and forth every time. I then broke into this guy's house blocked the door and demanded he sell me a mending book. Oh, but he's got sharpness 5. Yeah, go on then. I re-engineered his doorstep to be minecart compatible and then started trying to put him in one. It was a lot harder than it should have been. Guys, can you please get off the minecart track? Eventually, I sent him over to Jonathan the zombie and soon he was looking less like a villager and more like Shrek. But when I pushed the button to send him to the next room, it wasn't working. I realized that because I put the powered rails flat on the ground instead of on a slope, they wouldn't push the villager forward when activated. So I had to push him myself. To make things worse, I had actually completely forgotten to brew any weakness potions to cure him. I bought some mushrooms off the Lost Explorer in order to make a fermented spider eye and crafted a ton of golden apples. Before long, the splash potions were ready and I was able to kill the librarian. I also harvested my pumpkins for the first time in forever, and they'll become a key part of the menu at McDonald's in the future. While I waited for my prisoner, the uh, employee, to be cured, I returned to the mesa to destroy it even more than I already had. I found the hidden sponge too. So why was I doing all this environmental damage? For the new flooring in the restaurant, of course. The villager was back to his old self, and now all I had to do was convince him to work for me. For life. Yeah, so if you walk through there, you'll actually get a million dollars. He actually fell for it. I then purchased the Sharpness 5 book from him for one emerald. I headed over to the Shack of Shame as something had to be done about it. I present the Shack of Shame 2 cobblestone edition. I think this one actually works, however I still needed to fix Jonathan's compartment which was easier said than done. I ended up hitting him back and then blocking him off so that I could focus on the repairs uninterrupted. Once I was done I got back to work finishing the black and white floor. Also you see here where I accidentally break this extra slab? Keep that in mind for later. I had a few pieces of paper left and sold them to the librarian in order to level him up. Maybe he'll have some good books for sale, never mind, it's multi-shot. Day 50, I headed to the village of Breeder and was greeted with smiling faces. They're not doing a very good job of showing it, but they were smiling. The whole reason I'd come here was because I still needed the librarian to sell me mending, seeing as I chose to go with Sharpness 5 on the other one. Trying to get a mending librarian is essentially a test of your mental strength. Not only do you have to keep breaking and replacing the lectern, you also have to ignore any good books they offer you. But I'm a man of sheer will and focus, and that's why I would never fold when being shown Thorns 3. I would, I, would, I would never do that because that's just not me. Guys, no one in this village has minecart insurance. Get off the track before we're all arrested. At first, I thought Jonathan wasn't going to eat the villager, but after a few seconds, he was doing his thing. And when I pressed the badly positioned button at the top of the shack, the villager actually moved to the next room. The system actually worked. It was a miracle. While I waited for him to recover from the tragic zombie attack that was entirely my fault, I returned to trying to get a mending book. Except this guy straight up refused to be a librarian. 
He was not having any of it. So I said, yeah, yeah, no problem, man. I later added him to my hit list. I was running pretty low on weakness potions, or as I like to call them, villager discount potions. So I started brewing some more. I traded with this guy some more to level him up, and soon he was offering to buy ink sacks off me for one emerald apiece. The thorns the librarian had cured, and I now had to convince him to work at McDonald's. Hey, so did you know if you walk through there, you get two million dollars? Works every time. I mean, I've only tried it twice, but it's worked on both attempts. I started buying stuff from him, but I didn't realize my inventory was full, and I ended ended up throwing my entire net worth into his area. Luckily, I was able to defy the laws of physics and pick up all my emeralds through the wall. I went back to leveling him up, and then this happened. No way. <laughs> no way. I'll take your entire stock. All that trading had taken me up to level 24, and while I could have combined my two pickaxes together there and then, I wanted an extra level so that I could name the new tool. I resorted to selling coal from my auto smelter, and while I had just sold off critical supplies for an entirely pointless name change, in my eyes it was worth it. Hold on, I'm actually one level short. Get up, you're gonna be a farmer. I need XP and money. I began curing him and then started chopping wood, which I planned to turn into charcoal in order to replace all that coal I sold off. Did you know if you walk through there you'll get three million dollars? Farmers don't always sell pumpkins when they level up, but thankfully this one did. I then realized a lot of XP from the trades was getting stuck due to the walls. A little bit of remodeling was in order, but do you remember that extra slab I mined while replacing the floor? Yeah, it almost ended my existence. I sold some pumpkins to the farmer in preparation for the newest item on the menu, the muck pumpkin. At last I had enough levels to combine my pickaxes. And Pikachu was born. Like Pikachu, but it's a pickaxe, so it's funny. I think. Anyway, I needed to put it to the test, so I told my employees to hold down the fort while I was gone, and then teleported over to the Lost Explorer. This deep slate bottle was the perfect candidate to put Pikachu to the test. There were a ton of mobs inside, including creepers, more creepers, and a zombie villager who I debated saving, but knew he wasn't worth the effort. While plenty of caves have underwater sections, this one had dolphins in it. Probably not the correct habitat for them whatsoever, but it looked cool. I found the hidden sponge, as well as some much needed coal. There there were still plenty of mobs roaming the tunnels, and we had a few disagreements. Actually, make that a lot of disagreements. I also ruined an entire zombie family's day out. Unlucky, mate. There was an absolute ton of ores in this bottle, and by the way, how did that dolphin die? He was literally in the water. Just as I was about to leave, I heard monsters above me, which meant there was one last pocket of this cave I hadn't explored. I found a couple of zombies, as well as property damage on legs. I decided to give this spider a chance to attack me, and he really had me on the ropes. Had me worried for a second. I mined a little more iron, got jumped, and was about to head home when this bottle caught my eye. It was a ship in a bottle, how could I not explore it? I feel like the rain was really adding to the atmosphere here. I was fully expecting it to be crawling with mobs, but it was completely empty. There was some decent loot, some garbage loot, but what caught my interest was this unknown map. I had a look and recognized the desert temple bottle instantly. I knew I had to go there. Now witness reports say that I was seen stealing a priceless fossil in order to use as bone meal for my crops, but they haven't been confirmed true yet. I searched for the hidden sponge for a few seconds before giving up. I started chanting rain, rain, go away, come back another day, and it actually worked. Back at home, I filled up my auto smelter with coal and then threw in a bunch of wood and the several stacks of iron I'd mined. The employees had done a great job while I was away, mainly because I am our only customer, but that's besides the point. With the map in hand, I set out for the desert temple. I was gonna find that treasure. It's, it's here somewhere. And I've hit the bottom of the bottle. You could almost say I was scraping the bottom of the barrel. Get it? I'm gonna shut up now. I found the treasure eventually, and I don't know what I was expecting, but it definitely wasn't netherite scraps. There was also a potion of water breathing inside, which is gonna be really useful for when I break into the ocean monument. Once I got back, I remembered I'd be meaning to fix this enchanted bow. It only cost me two levels as well. It was an absolute bargain. That was all well and good, but I was still sitting on a pile of mending and thorns books that I didn't have the XP for in order to use them on my gear. It's time to hire some new employees. I yanked this guy straight out of his bed into the minecart. Just, just get out the way. Jonathan said yummy yummy, and I said you will make me a lot of money. Another thing I picked up from my good friend Shakespeare. I then collected some pumpkins and sold them to the farmer for a price. Not a fair one, but a price nonetheless. 
The next morning, I started preparing supplies for another trip. I wanted to set up auto pumpkin and melon farms, and for that I would need quartz in order to craft observers. The villager was now fully cured and was ready for his new job. So did you know if you walk through there you'll get $4 million? I, I should probably stop saying that. I needed to sell him wheat in order to level him up, which meant I had to harvest my very neglected farm. I knew it wouldn't be enough, and sat in place for several minutes spamming bone meal. Things then went sideways when he had the pumpkin pie trade instead of the regular pumpkin one. Nah, don't worry about it. We can work with that. No, we can't. I spent most of the day doing chores and then headed to the village. Um... Okay. This guy was the unfortunate winner of a new job at McRonald's. I am so sorry. While I waited for him to recover, I set up a teleporter and began heading over to the nether. Once I finally arrived, I placed down the other teleporter, checked that it worked, and put on some gold boots. I was a lot more confident going in this time. Not only did I have the boots, I also had a good bow and blast resistant blocks to bridge with. My plan was to trade with the piglins for quartz, but my plans went out the window when I got chased by children. Me, a grown man, running away from the baby hoglands. It was not my proudest moment. I made my way back to the crimson bottle, but I didn't want to go in. There were several hoglands in there, and I wasn't confident I could take them all out without accidentally hitting a piglin. I decided I would come back later, and instead set my sights on the nether fortress. After some very risky fighting on the bridge, including smacking this wither's curtain over the head with my bow, I made it to the fortress bottle. This place was absolutely overrun with mobs. Within minutes, I took a dive into the lava below, but I came prepared with golden apples. After getting bullied by those Hulkling children, I had to restore my masculinity somehow, and fighting this giant crowd of enemies seemed like the perfect solution. I mean, it was epic. I got my first Wither Skull, fireballs were flying, the hospital bills were in the millions. I got knocked off again, but I just chugged another golden apple. Turns out there was a chest down here with some nether warts, and there was a sponge behind it. Up top, it really was all-out warfare. I was winning until I did this really cool pro gamer move called Hit the Zombie Piglin by accident. Yeah, I had to make another of those tactical retreats. Also, I don't know if the drop rate was nerfed on this map, or if I was just really unlucky, but from all that fighting, I only got a single blaze rod. I tried to get another from this blaze in the basalt bottle, and his magma cube friends were not happy about it. I went back to the crimson bottle in the hopes of trading for some quartz. This infant hoglin tried to get the jump on me, and so I punched him in the face. Officer, it was all self-defense, I swear. I chucked the piglins a pile of gold bars and waited for the results. Should I be happy that I got gravel, or mad, because gravel in return for gold ingots is a complete scam? I did get some quartz, but not nearly enough, so I carved out the bottle trying to find more. Not one piece was found. The piglins had also given me some fire resistance potions, and after drinking one, I laughed like a madman as the blazes attacks bounced off me. I hadn't even fallen off- That's fine, I'll just climb up and- it took absolutely ages to get enough blaze rods, and I feel like it was Minecraft's way of balancing out the mending trade I got earlier. Like sure, we'll give you a super lucky trade that will save you hours of pain resetting villagers, but in return you have to spend those hours farming blazes instead. I spotted a bastion in the distance, as well as a bottle that was littered with quartz. Wow, this gold was just left out here. That must mean it's free. I was initially cautious of the bastion because of how overpowered piglin brutes are, but as far as I could tell, this one had none of them. The loot was... Well, it was loot. I'll put it that way. Once I made it to the bottle with all the quartz, I noticed it also had some ancient debris. It also had way too much lava. I'd go three blocks forward and find yet another flow of silicon-rich, scorching hot magma. That's a fancy way of saying lava I found on Wikipedia. Eventually, I was satisfied with the amount of quartz and ancient debris I'd collected and made my way back home. Day 57, I harvested the pumpkins, sold them off, and bought some McDonald's golden carrots. Are they healthy? Nope. Do they taste good? Absolutely. Now that I was over level 30, I decided to enchant a new sword, and I mean, it was decent. I spent most of the day collecting cobblestone, which I'll need to craft observers and pistons. I found some diamonds, but I'm rich. I don't need these. And after collecting cobblestone for an entire day, I only had enough to make the components for one of the auto farms. I made a couple of netherite ingots, and now that I had an iron surplus from that deep slate bottle, I sold some to Barry and Brenda. I converted Pikachu to netherite, and I 
feel like someone can make a really clickbait thumbnail out of that. I spent about 3 minutes in Photoshop making this and I think it's beautiful. I got this sweeping edge sword, added sharpness and mending to it, and now the only thing separating me and the best sword in the game were a few XP levels. As I watch this video back, I'm starting to realise instead of being a ruthless capitalist, I could have just made a mob farm. But I think we can all agree the capitalism route is way more entertaining. The village seems as good a place as any to build the farm. I hope this house had a nice life because now its life is over. I could have and should have picked a different bottle for these farms because every creature in this bottle at some point or the other ended up in this hole. I laid down the minecart tracks and had to escort out a few villagers. Listen, you can either go down there or you can leave on your own. Look, he gets it. I didn't have the heart to get rid of the Fletcher and instead got him out using a minecart. The same cannot be said for the other mobs. By far the worst part of the build process was placing these pistons. I was missing some glowstone to light the whole thing up and had to make a trip to the nether. And yes, I had to suffer third degree burns to get it. While I was on my way back, I met some endermen and... I only got one pearl, it was an absolute ripoff. I completed the farm with my newfound glowstone, and I mean, it's definitely not winning in the looks department, but it had already produced pumpkins. And soon, the muck pumpkin will be served in every McDonald's restaurant around the world. And by that, I mean the singular McDonald's on a Minecraft world. That's the only one. Seeing as I only employed one farmer, I definitely needed to expand my workforce. Instead of curing the villagers and then leveling them up, I instead made sure they would have the pumpkin trade before I went ahead and let Jonathan eat them. I also decided to catch up with the villagers, because they just love me so much. So, how's college? I'm seven. I went to get a weakness potion for the villager that had just been infected, but when I got back, I was in for a surprise. I killed this guy before heading to the nether and I just completely forgot he even existed. He didn't really seem to want a job, but his opinion doesn't matter. After leveling him up, he chose to buy pumpkins, which means he's getting employee of the minute. That's right, employee of the minute is my new strategy to boost morale. Even though I'd only built it yesterday, the pumpkin farm had already generated an entire stack of pumpkins. The illegal profits I made were outstanding. Up till now I just laid out all my teleporters in the middle of my base, so I decided to make an official hub for them. Although I didn't know what material to use for the roof, so I just didn't build one. I will fix that later by the way. And by later, I mean right now. I decided I wanted to use copper. I thought it'd be pretty cool to watch it oxidize as time goes by. I chucked it all in the furnace and started moving the teleporters into the hub. I then made a ton of money off the inmate- they're not inmates. They like being here. Do you remember that jack-o'-lantern I had at the start that I interacted with about twice and then completely forgot about? Well, now he has a friend. And that's my one good deed used up for the year. Most of the copper was done, so I cut it into slabs. Did you know the block with the longest name is the Wax Lightly Weathered Cut Copper Stairs? Yeah, if someone asked me for some of those on a server, I would probably never log on again. Day 63, all I needed were a few more levels and I'd be able to make the ultimate sword. The auto farm had produced plenty of pumpkins, but the pumpkins alone weren't able to get my level high enough, which is where illegal squid poaching comes in. Simply kill so many squids they end up on an endangered list, sell their ink sacks to a willing librarian, and would you look at that, you've got a maxed out sword. I know it's missing knockback, but I don't really like knockback. I made some more golden apples, converted my new sword to netherite, and began making my way over to the woodland mansion. I was armed to the teeth and ready for a battle, which is why when I entered the bottle, I dropped my sword. <clears throat> I pushed in and before I even got to the front door, I had to deal with several enemies. I thought it was going well. And then I saw my armor's durability. Kinda knocked my confidence a bit, not gonna lie, but I pushed on. I defeated another evoker, netting me a second totem of undying. I found a god apple and prepared myself for the onslaught of the second floor. It would be dangerous. It would be life-threatening. It would be... It would be guarded by a single skeleton. There was a diamond block inside this obsidian thing, as well as a sponge, but I felt scammed. I only got to stab four pillagers. That just, that just doesn't seem fair to me. I'd pull a Karen and ask for the manager, but all the pillagers are dead, so I must have killed the manager. I robbed, I mean I traded with the villagers, and I knew I had to get mending on my armor ASAP. If I had the levels for it, that would have been nice. The best way I could acquire more XP was by adding melons to the McDonald's menu. The only problem was that I had nowhere near enough redstone to make all the components for an auto melon farm. I fixed my lack of redstone, fixed my lack of regular stone, and unalived this enderman. 
Now that I had all the observers and pistons I needed, I was able to start work on the farm. Unsurprisingly, I had to destroy more property in order to make space for my new money making machine. Sleepover villagers, I'm definitely not doing anything bad outside. Aside from building, I also did some midnight trading. As the company CEO, I'm awarding myself 100% of the profits. Yay! Round of applause. Why is, why is no one clapping? I continued working on the melon farm and because I blocked the door of the villager breeder, I was able to build without any interruptions. I could feel my soul healing. Even with all the thousands of crimes I've committed, luckily I was fully stocked on supplies, which meant I was definitely going to be able to finish the farm. I ran out of redstone and was unable to finish the farm. I traded with the villagers, because when am I not trading with the villagers, and then went to the deep slate bottle to get more redstone. Well everyone, we did it. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I somehow made the village even uglier. That's actually impressive to be honest. I also finally had enough levels to put mending and thorns on my chest plate. Now that I had doubled my economic output with a second farm, the only logical thing to do was to double my employees. Of course I wasn't going to ask the villagers nicely if they wanted a job, I learned that the hard way earlier. I purchased some brown mushrooms from the lost explorer and began brewing more anti-zombie juice. I chopped down my first dark oak trees and while I was sorting through my stuff I came across that water breathing potion from earlier. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's time to milk a cow. Nah, I'm kidding. Of course, it was time to ransack the ocean monument. The first guardian put up an incredible fight, but somehow I made it through and took it down. The second got completely bullied. I didn't even take any damage. The third was like, well, you've killed both my mates and they're the exact same as me, so I'm not going to stand a chance, am I? And he was right. He did not stand a chance. I then swam out of the monument, completely forgetting about the eight hidden gold blocks these things have. Instead, I looted the ocean ruins, which was an amazing decision. I then made my merry way back home, unaware I had left eight million dollars worth of gold behind. I checked up on the pumpkin and melon farms and they had both produced plenty of fruit, which in turn produced plenty of money. I made a fresh diamond shovel and finally, finally the gravel in the ocean was mine. It was all mine. Ah, ha, ha. It's, it's 1 a.m. and my parents are sleeping. I should probably calm down. At last, I could collect more than four blocks without being banned from the premises. I wanted to get enough XP to put mending on every piece of my armor, but I would have to wait a few days for the pumpkin and melon farms to restock. I needed to stay fairly close to the farms in order for them to work, so I thought of a little project to keep me busy in the meantime. You'll find out what it is in a minute. Also, it's kind of funny that as I'm pillaring up with this concrete powder, you can see that not a single piece of the copper roof has oxidized. You can also see the gaping hole in the roof of the McRonalds that I haven't fixed. Seeing as it was almost broken, my helmet was next in line to receive mending. Day 69, stop laughing. Day 69, I began constructing a retirement home. That's right, a retirement home. Not for my employees, because they're not allowed to retire, but for Barry and Brenda. They've been trapped in that wooden box for a very long time, and I think they deserve an upgrade. While it did take me several days to build, the positive side was that the whole time I was working on it, my auto farms were producing plenty of pumpkins and melons. I completed the house, and I thought it turned out pretty nice. Well, the outside turned out nice. Also, the copper was finally starting to oxidize. I would compare this feeling of happiness to when my children were born. <laughs> I don't even have children. Even though it had only been a few days since I last checked on them, the farms already had plenty of fruit. McRonald's stock market value was going through the roof, baby. I mean, what's next? The ice cream machine works? No. No, that's never happening. I went to the jungle to get some vines to decorate the new house more, and I think Barry and Brenda are gonna love it. I mean, as much as emotionless villagers in a block game can love something anyway. Hello, citizens. Can I interest you in a job with 24 hours per day, every day for the rest of your lives? Stop struggling. I know you want this job. Jonathan was a hungry boy as per usual, and after curing the villager, I set about refilling my wood supply. And then I got jumped by Jonathan's relatives. This is what it feels like to open a pack of gum in class. After dealing with the zombie horde, I devoted the night to making the retirement home look at least somewhat livable. There were still zombie remains on my property the next morning, but I did my best to ignore them. The villagers said thank you for curing me, I'll work for you, but please don't put me in a 1x2 box. 
business was booming and I was able to get all the way from level 13 to 26. And now it was time to finally free Barry and Brenda. While it would have been really funny if they fell off the one block wide dirt bridge, they both made it to their new home. Some people will say it's too empty, but I call it a creative choice. I put mending on my leggings and now that my armor is almost perfect, I decided it was time to visit this dungeon bottle. Also what? I could have just broken into the top to steal all the presumably good loot, but my moral code said I should do the whole thing properly. I then saw how many monsters there were on the first floor and immediately regretted my choice. I made a small safety platform and then broke the iron bars blocking the entrance. What followed next can only be described as complete chaos. I killed all the enemies, took care of the spawner and deleted this spider minding his own business. What could be on the second floor, I thought to myself. Karma, that's what was on the second floor. Well, surely it can't get any worse from here. Yes, it can. It absolutely can. The fourth floor was where things really started to go sideways. It was full of witches, which in my opinion are some of the scariest mobs to face if they're in a group. They can hit you with poison, weakness, slowness, and harming. And the whole time they'll be gulping down healing potions like there's no tomorrow. That was a really hard fight, so the loot must be really good. I could barely get up to the fifth floor because every time I got close to the stairs, a fresh wave of zombies would attack. I figured my best option was to rush up and get rid of the spawner, which worked, but I now had a crowd of enemies chasing me. I tried to back up a couple floors to get some breathing space, but thanks to all the creeper holes, they were able to drop straight down to me. There were also some witches lingering around, and I got hit with a ton of debuffs. I made my stand on the bottom floor and finally started to push the enemies back. I made it back to the fifth floor and after clearing some final zombies, I had a moment of peace. All the cave spiders had given up for some reason, and whatever that reason was, I wasn't going to question it. Another horde of zombies poured in from the 6th floor, and I knew playing defensive wasn't going to work. I said how'd you do to this creeper, he didn't like it very much, and after destroying the spawner, I kept pushing. I had to keep fighting. Wait, never mind, I'm going to run away now. At this point, things just spiraled entirely out of control. One minute I was fighting children, the next I was sustaining third degree burns, and then the next I was taking on an entire SWAT team. I love how amongst this army of diamond zombies, there's just a skeleton with absolutely nothing to his name. After mowing down hordes of zombies and putting this guy in a high pixel PvP montage, I finally got my feet down on the top floor. I really should have broken the spawners, but instead I lit them up. The zombies deserve zero mercy, I have no clue why I did this. Some of the loot up here was questionable, but for the most part it was pretty good. I had a suspicion there was a sponge in one of these pedestals, and I was correct. I began making my way home with 5 broken bones and several cases of internal bleeding. Oh yeah, and a lack of brain cells. I mean, what other explanation is there for me trying to sleep in this bed in the middle of the day? Once I was back at the base, I wasted no time checking my farms and making money. I had enough levels to enchant a new pair of boots. Boots, and while I did get protection 4, I also really wanted feather falling. I grabbed a lectern, barricaded myself inside the villager breeder, and mentally prepared myself. Clearly, I didn't prepare enough because after 10 minutes, I was already praying that a missile would hit the building and take me out. Part of the problem was that it was taking ages for any of the villagers to claim the lectern, so I thought a better plan would be to try one on one. I built this little box, grabbed a villager, and he didn't claim the lectern. Maybe if I just expand the box... Okay, well maybe if I just move him to my base... I was now back to square one, so I got another villager, put him in a minecart, and then a pig pushed him back to the breeder. I said there's no way this night can get any worse. Somehow I had the mental willpower to keep going and eventually got the villager over to Jonathan. Nothing like the smell of cold hard cash in the morning. I started enchanting bows which I could then combine with the unsettling bow to create the ultimate bow. I've said bow way too many times. Once I'd used up most of my levels, it was time for a quest to the nether to get some ancient debris. That is a death sentence. Along the way, I ended up getting sidetracked and tried to get some wither skulls, but gave up pretty quickly. Once I reached the final bottle, I placed down the small amount of TNT I had. What I wanted to do was get ancient debris. What I ended up doing was becoming public enemy number one of the zombie piglins. I retreated to the nether fortress and farmed wither skirtons for a few minutes. Before long, the piglins had already forgotten about me blowing their land up. There was a ridiculous amount of lava in here, but the more I dried up, the more 
ancient debris I found. Day 75, I was doing some manual labor in hell. You know, as you do. It's a good job I made peace with the zombie piglins, because I swear they multiply every minute. As I was heading back, I decided to farm a couple more skeletons, and ended up getting a skull within seconds. Also, can we get an F in the comments for this guy? Once I was back at the base, I began melting down the ancient debris, and then went over to the ocean bottle to collect prismarine. Seeing as I'll be fighting the wither later, I wanted to build a cool temple for the beacon. Even though I'd enchanted all those bows earlier, I still hadn't gotten one with punch too. Why am I bringing this up now? Because I somehow found a book with it in this random shipwreck. I added the book to one of the bows and got to work combining. Except I did it in the wrong order. The end result was supposed to be power 5, but as you can see, that is not power 5. I then sat in my house for 10 minutes contemplating my own stupidity. In order to take my mind off things, I spent some time building what looks like a dried out swimming pool. It's gonna be a cool fountain in the future though, trust me. Did some more trading and bought an entire stack of apples. I don't... I don't know why I did that. I moved this prisoner, villager, into the restaurant and began playing lectern breaking simulator. I was beginning to lose hope when finally, finally I was offered feather falling 4. I bought the book for just 19 emeralds, combined it with my mending and soul speed books, and now all that was left was to get enough levels to add them all to my boots. A quick round of untaxed and unregulated profits later, and I had all the XP I needed. I headed to the ocean monument to collect some more prismarine, and then for some reason started heading home on foot. In this day and age... Come on now. I set out in the opposite direction in order to explore these bamboo jungle bottles. Oh, look at that panda. By the way, he dies later. Once I was back home, I finished the structure at the fountain and added a few little details around the base. After adding in some water, it was complete, and I feel like a solid 90% of the reason this looks good is because of the shaders I'm using. I paid a visit to the savannah bottle to get some dirt because I wanted to surround the base in crops, but I ended up not really liking the idea. My current goal was to get enough levels to enchant a new bow, which I could then combine with my other ones to finally get one that was maxed out. I also went ahead and removed this copper roof because there was no way this thing would fully oxidize by day 100. I swapped it with some dark prismarine, which I think is a fairly decent replacement. I didn't want all that dirt I'd shoveled earlier to go to waste, so I added this area at the front where I could chop down trees. Collected some wood, fed Jonathan another villager, traded copious amounts of pumpkins and melons, and spent some time sprucing up the fountain. Get it? Because I built a spruce bridge? <coughs> anyway, the reason why I got another villager actually wasn't to increase my profits. I really didn't want to have to sit around in the warped bottle in the nether farming endermen, so I figured instead I would just level up a cleric and buy pearls off him. Some may call this pay to win, I would call it an efficient strategy. He also sold bottles of enchanting, which got me to exactly level 30. I enchanted a new power 3 bow, very carefully combined it, and thankfully this time I'd done it correctly. I just didn't have enough levels like usual. I crafted a ton of slabs and bought some new teleporters, because I just remembered something. I would bought the mushroom bottle compass off the Lost Explorer ages ago, and figured now was as good a time as any to track the bottle down. After the experience with the nether portal, I knew this was going to take a very, 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 very long time. Two whole days of bridging and an entire inventory of slabs later, the fabled mushroom bottle was finally within reach. Well this is pretty cool, I wonder what's in this barrel? I love how this map's logic is that fighting a multi-layered dungeon with enemies in diamond armor gets you less loot than some random bottle in the middle of nowhere. There were three bowls of suspicious stew, and naturally, I ate all of them. None of them had any effect, which is actually pretty suspicious to be honest. After the amount of bridging I had to do to get here, there was no way I was leaving without finding the hidden sponge. Not there. Not there. Aha. I teleported back and got a glimpse at the sheer length of my bridge. I also made the most of my new feather falling boots and only broke one of my ankles instead of two. Look at all these mushrooms. Wait, I dropped my sword. Look at all these mushrooms. You're not scamming me anymore. He pretended not to care, but he definitely did. Thanks to the mushroom bottle, I now had more than enough netherite to convert all of my armor. CEO of McDonald's, at your service. I wanted to add some more greenery to the base and grew a giant jungle tree in my backyard, but it ended up looking more like a medium jungle tree. I chopped the whole thing down, which was a massive pain. 
and while I waited for the leaves to decay, I passed the time with some building. I made this lovely seating area for the McRonalds, which would have been useful if I wasn't our one and only customer. I got a bit carried away and also built this little cart. The special meal of the day is the Malumpkin. It's a cross between a melon and a pumpkin. You don't seem that impressed. I actually got really carried away with the building and ended up making some street lights instead of sleeping. With a few more trades on day 85, I was finally able to make a maxed out bow. I started trying to collect more jungle saplings and seeing as they have half the normal drop rate of all the other saplings, it was a pretty tedious process. I also used a silk touch pick to get some of the grass blocks and place them back at the base. Okay, round two, let's try this again. Why? You know what? That's that's fine. We'll just try on this side. <sighs> Want to know what's worse than removing one jungle tree? Death. But removing two jungle trees isn't far behind. I figured this little arch at the end of my roof was probably cutting off how tall the trees could grow. I made sure to also plant the saplings a little bit further back, and at last I had a giant jungle tree worthy of its name. I grew one on the other side, and while it was an improvement, it still wasn't what I wanted. No, no, it's fine, I needed another 200 jungle logs anyway. I thought the perfect addition to these garden things I was making was some animal life. And what better animal to keep in your backyard than a panda? Side note, there's a lot of animals that are much better to keep than a panda, because keeping a panda is actually illegal in every single country in the entire world. But the law couldn't keep me and my soon-to-be panda best friend apart. I entered the bottle, and this guy was so cool, he was doing front flips. And you know, at the end of the day, at least he died doing what he loved. I shouldn't be laughing, I really shouldn't be. I left the bamboo bottle, I kind of accepted defeat there and then. The other panda in there can live out his days in peace. I decided to tame some parrots instead, since they were a lot easier to take back home. I finally managed to grow a large jungle tree on the right, and then this guy said he wanted to work at McDonald's. This is the first time in the entire video someone's willingly wanted to work here. I'm gonna be honest here, the next 7 or so days are pretty centered around building, and that's not the most entertaining thing to watch, so I'll just take you through all the interesting bits. I needed wool for my beacon temple, so I started a sheep pen, clearly having learnt nothing from creating an entire nation out of cows. I started making an entrance for my beacon temple, but ended up not liking what I've made and took it all down. I finally visited these beach bottles that were near the village, ended up meeting a rabbit, and after destroying his habitat, I found the hidden sponge. And then you'll never guess what happened next. Like it's so out of character for me, you literally will not guess. I paid my workers. I paid my workers, can you believe it? I still can't. I gave the feather falling librarian coal because I hate him. Spiced up the fountain by adding some coral fans and sea pickles, but I wasn't done there. I caught a trio of axolotls from the deep slate bottle and then spent ages trying to decide what to name them. Meet Zoe, Chloe, and Horus, destroyer of worlds. If there was a fight, personally, my money's on Chloe. I thought it was about time I did something about the state of the village. There was machinery everywhere and they all live in what is essentially a glorified wood and box. I covered the farms with a mountain of dirt and while it looked terrible at first, by the time I was finished it was slightly less terrible. I then got started on making an actual house for the villagers and if that's not character development compared to the start of the video, I don't know what is. To make up for all the suffering I'd caused them, I even gave them a 4k obsidian flat screen TV. I think that should excuse all my previous crimes. If you go on to enjoy this video, consider oh don't mind me, I'm just enjoying some quality TV. I then grew some trees and added some bone meal and honestly, I think it turned out great. The sheep's numbers had grown to an alarming size and if they were ever to join forces with the cows, I don't think I'd survive. I bought a stronghold compass as well as some teleporters, and on day 96, I set out to kill the dragon. Because of that whole jungle tree episode, my slab supply was through the roof. After bridging for the entire day, I finally came into contact with the stronghold bottle. Random thought, but I feel like everyone at some point in their lives has been in creative and accidentally built something out of silverfish stone bricks instead of regular ones. We've all done it. I checked the library for enchanted books, for some reason. I mean, I already had maxed out armor and tools. I did find a sponge though, so it was worth it. I lit the portal and stared into the camera for a cinematic speech. As Sun Tzu said, Cancel the enemy's life subscription before they can cancel yours. Or 
something like that. When I arrived in the end, it was not exactly what I was expecting. This was a lot more dangerous than the regular end, because the dragon could knock me into the void at any time. I climbed to the top of one of the towers and started taking down the crystals. Soon, all that remained were the ones protected by cages. I had to constantly keep an eye on the dragon in case she suddenly swooped in and removed me from her property. She almost knocked me off right here, and then about 10 seconds later, nearly got me again. With one crystal left, I rushed rushed across to the other side, praying that the dragon didn't decide to headbutt me. I made it over, uninstalled the crystal's existence, and then all I had to do was land my bow shots. She tried to activate her invisibility jutsu, but it was too late. I watched her blow up, collected her soul, and stole her egg. Wait, am I the bad guy here? Of course, even though the dragon was dead, I still had an elytra to get and a wither to defeat. I entered the gateway and was surprised to find out that the outer end actually hadn't been confined to a series of cylindrical glass apparatus. You know, bottles. It really would have helped though, because searching for an end city is by far one of the most painful things to do in this game. I finally came across one on day 98, and thankfully it had a ship. I wasn't interested in any of the loot, all I wanted were a pair of wings. I decided to assert my dominance over this shulker by smacking him repeatedly with my shovel. I grabbed the elytra, swiped this dragon head off the front, and made a clean getaway. That was mainly due to the fact that the people I was stealing from were purple boxes with no legs. It wasn't long before I found a gateway and was transported back to the main end island. I then displayed the priceless dragon egg on my bedside table. With one day left before day 100, I had a lot of stuff to do. My first step was upgrading my elytra to the Apple iWing 17 Pro Max Ultra. It also has 9 cameras. I I took to the skies and it was genuinely really cool seeing the world from above. It was all well and good admiring the view, but I had potions to brew and an entire temple to build. You can finally see why I bred all those sheep, and it was so that I could make clouds out of white wool. After one last emergency trip to the ocean monument to resupply on Prismarine, I was able to finish the temple on day 100. I wasn't slowing down though. If anything, I was going even faster. I raced to the nether, murdered a blaze to get rods, collected some soul soil, used the blaze's remains to brew strength potions, ripped my employees off one last time, and just as the sun was setting, I was ready to fight the wither. I picked the deep slate bottle as the battleground, and with home-brewed energy drinks coursing through my veins, I was ready. I really wish I could say this was an epic nail biter, but this is the Java Wither we're talking about. I actually managed to damage myself more than the Wither did by trying to fly out of this hole. Imagine if I actually died here. I returned home and grabbed all my riches, all my criminal profits, and piled them high with a beacon on top. I'd done it. I'd survived 100 days in this strange bottle world. Oh, you want a raise? <laughs> no. 